What's going on everyone? My name is Vinny BB and welcome to the 2023 edition of the Vinny BB Q&A. Now the reason why I'm doing a Q&A is because I haven't done one since August of 2021. And since so many new people have flooded into my Twitch community, which you should follow by the way, link is in the description down below. I've been streaming for 840 plus days. We'd love to see you in there right now. These questions have been divided into four categories. Troll questions, food questions, music questions, and then the real hard hitting thinking questions. And if you guys want to jump to each question, I will have all of them in the description down below with the timestamps. So you could just jump around for each question. Or if you ask one on here, you can go to yours right down there. And without further ado, let's just jump right in and get these out of the way. First, we have the troll questions from goodluck7000 asks, who has a bigger forehead, Rihanna or Peyton Manning? Peyton Manning, dude has to pull off his helmet and extend his like cranium. He looks like this. Koza asks, how happy are you that I'm turning 14 tomorrow, March 9th? Well, according to my calculation, it is March 18th, so happy late birthday. Roman numerals asks, what is love? Baby, don't hurt me. From Big Toe, am I your son and why did you leave? Well, this is two questions. First of all, no, and the milk is on sale. Trooper asks, will you ever play the auto rap battles game on Roblox again? Now, some backstory behind this. Back in 2019, 2020, I used to play Roblox on stream, and it was probably the funniest thing I've ever done. And there's a one game called Auto Rap Battles where you just rap in front of a group of people and it's absolutely stupid. Hold on, let me check it out. I just got in here and it says you are still a minor until you're 30. What? I wish my 19 had a job of playing Xbox all day with his booger cover controller that barely works. What is this game? Dude, I just loaded into this game and they're already talking about like the age of consent or something like that. What the? Oh my god, like, what are they saying? I gotta get out of this game bad. Golfer Bobber asks, who would win in a fight? You or Paige? Now, for people who don't know who Paige, Paige is one of my old managers at my old job. He's actually a viewer of the stream now and my friend, and I see him from time to time. He's like over six foot and like more buff than me. And it's just, I mean, he ain't bulletproof, but you know, Vinny will probably lose a, like an actual fist fight. Truthly asks, what is your thoughts on Brandon Currington, otherwise known as that erotic barber. I think he's a great barber. He absolutely lines up everyone. Perfect fades and all that. And if you guys want to see a perfect haircut that you guys should probably get, look up Thug Shaker on Google and go to images. It is probably the best looking haircut you've ever seen. Jake asks, what do you think of the motherland Poland? I love Poland. Dansk boys rise up. I don't know what this means because you spam in my chat like 500 times, but I love Poland. Now moving on to the food questions. Apps1000 asks, what is Mr. Vinny BB's favorite food? Simple answer. Just a nice, like, quart size, about this size, of just shrimp fried rice. I can just eat that for days on end. I, when I go and get it, it comes in this size, like this big, and I just I just shovel it in. It is delicious. Uh, probably the best food ever. I could live off that for my entire life if I have to. Yugi Bugelson, hopefully I said that right, says, How do you order your sub at Subway? This may come as a shock to most people, but I actually do not like Subway at all. I'm more of a Jimmy John's uh, Penn Station type of guy. But if I was supposed to eat it, if someone forced me to eat it, I'd probably get a spicy Italian with jalapenos, banana peppers, and lettuce with sweet onion sauce. It may sound good, but I'll try and get through it. It, it, it. That's the most edible thing I can really eat from there. Enderman B asked favorite food and drink. Well, I'll give you the drink answer because we already answered my favorite food, but it is the sweet nectar of Coca-Cola. Absolutely delicious. I have zero cavities. And by the way, water is also pretty good too, but I'm gonna have to say Coca-Cola. Chirpy asked, what is your favorite chip flavor? Well, to give you the simple answer is the purple bag of Doritos, the spicy sweet chili. Oh, those are so good. But if there's another one I have to give that is a type of chip, I would say it would have to be the Flamin' Hot Chipotle Ranch Cheetos. I believe they were on the shelf for about two months and then they just absolutely discontinued them. If they were back now, I'd buy 50 bags of them. I could just eat those straight up. They were so good. And then they just disappeared. Uncle Stan Bana asked, what is your go-to Chipotle order? Now, I have done videos in the past going to get my Chipotle order and it actually changes every time. Now, here's the official Vinny BB order from Chipotle. Write this down or get it. You have to get it when, like, you next time you go to Chipotle, you get a bowl. Brown rice, no beans, chicken, and you get the green salsa. You, you put that on there and you get cheese and lettuce. And there it is. That's it. Nothing else. Sometimes I would switch out the spicy green salsa with like light sour cream, or I might just add like queso on it. You know that if I'm feeling it that day, if I want to pay extra for it, but just those main things. Perfect. That's the Vinny bowl from Chipotle. And now, you know, I'm currently in the middle of editing this and I forgot to add a question from Axis OG who asks, does pineapple belong on pizza? And here's my ruling. Pineapple does belong on pizza that only has meat on it. If you have vegetables and then you add pineapple on it, you need to seek help. But I personally think like pineapple and ham, pineapple and sausage, pineapple and pepperoni, 
I think they all go well together. But once you add vegetables to the mix, it's just disgusting. So that is my ruling on pineapple and pizza. Moving on to the music questions, we have Chris Oliver music remixes. Do you like Falling in Reverse? I don't know why this is what popped in my head as a Q&A question. Personally, I haven't listened to Falling in Reverse, but don't worry. I listened to a little bit before I answer this question. And I'm going to be honest, it's not my type of music. I'm not into that, like that whole metalcore type of stuff. But uh, if you guys enjoy it, you guys enjoy it. But personally, me, I'm not a big fan. Mason, aka Ralph, Ralph forgot to change his name. He said, if you had to choose a song to listen for the rest of your life, what song would that be? After giving it some thought, the one song that like gets me hype and upbeat and just like does not miss every time it comes on like on all my playlists is Don't Stop Me Now by Queen. That is song is such a banger and it gets the blood and adrenaline pumping. It's actually one of my favorite Queen songs of all time. Yo, I'm Spage ask, what is your favorite album of all time that isn't the Red Hot Chili Peppers? Ooh, that's a tough question. If you guys know Red Hot Chili Peppers, mwah. Every album is a masterpiece. So I have two albums in mind that I cannot choose one or the other because they're just absolute freaking bangers. The first one would have to be Goodbye and Good Riddance by Juice World. No skips. Absolute masterpiece of an album. I listened to it late in 2020, after way after it came out, and I absolutely loved every song on it. It's such a banger, and I still listen to that like album to this day. The second one is kind of a wild card that no one really expects. It's actually The Beatles' Revolver. That album, oh my god, I used to listen to it all the time when I was a kid. I grew up listening to the Beatles. I don't really listen that much now, but that album right there, oh my god, every song is so good. It was the perfect like transition from like their classical music into like their like psychedelic stuff. It was oh. but you could switch out Revolver for like Rubber Soul, Magical Mystery Tour, Sgt. Pepper's, Let It Be, or the White Album. You could switch out for any one of those and still an absolute classic. I love all those. We are finally on the random questions, you know, all the rest of the questions that didn't have a category. So from OREC, we have what is your most played game? So I'm going to give you a top three here. Number three would have to be Counter-Strike with 970 hours. I used to play this all the time back in 2016, 2017. And I'm still playing it to this day. I'm Gold Nova 1 with almost 1,000 hours. You know how sad that is. Number two highest played reply have to be Fortnite. I remember coming home as a senior in 2018. You know, like obviously going to like do sports and stuff and then coming home, doing homework and then getting on the game and just playing for hours on end with friends. I think that was probably the best like gaming moments in my life with friends. It was just absolutely insane. It's absolutely nostalgic thinking about that because that was almost five years ago and I wish I can get that back today, but I don't think it'll really happen again. And number one, it's not really on my PC. It's actually on my Nintendo DS. I think the most played game I have like with hours wise is Animal Crossing Wild World, which is my favorite game of all time. I used to come home from elementary school, not do anything, lay on my bed and just Plug it in uh, or put it in my Nintendo DS and just go ham for all all night. Like you could, you can do anything in that game. It just doesn't get old. So I have to say Animal Crossing Wild World. I clocked in so much time in that game. I wish I knew how much time I had on it. Next from the Tootsie Tickle Monster. Okay. Of all the games you stream, which was your favorite to do? Really easy, simple answer here was I first figured out how to play GTA Chaos Mod on stream for the very first time. For the people who don't know what Chaos Mod is, it was basically a thing where there was a list. It was like one through four. And there was things to mess with my game and chat would vote on it through the Twitch chat. And these were supposed to like mess my game up, like crash my game and all that stuff. And the first time I played it, I was crying, laughing at the most stupidest things ever. Because I could get soft locked, I could explode whenever. And that was probably the funniest thing I've ever done. I don't know if I'll do it again because I got burnt out of it the second time I did it. But that was probably the funniest thing that's ever happened to me and probably the best thing I've ever streamed. From JJ, what's under your bed? Well, crazy enough, the floor. Yes, my mattress is on the floor. Now, hold your questions as to why. I don't have a bed frame. I used to have a bed frame, but my my back, I don't really have back problems, but I had trouble sleeping. And then once I got onto the floor, I could sleep the night away like it's nothing. I don't know if it's being close to the ground or gravity or something, but yeah, I sleep way better. And I don't expect any girl to come over and be like, oh, why is your mattress on the ground? I mean, hey, no girl will ever come over, so that's okay. But yeah, my mattress is on the ground. There's nothing underneath it. I do keep it clean though. Plus, I can just jump into bed whenever I want to without breaking anything. God, I'm so smart. Monk asks, what is the key moment in your life where you found a value or moral you carry with every day, if you have one? I've experienced, you know, obviously death with all, like all my grandparents, you know, pets. I've had girls like absolutely use me, but I still keep kicking and I still keep moving because like when I'm out in public, I still make the best of what I got here on earth. I can just go around and make friends with everyone, be nice to everyone. I'm never really that guy who's always angry about something or mean or rude or anything like that. I don't care who it is or what it is. I just live like as it is, treat everyone with respect, treat everyone with kindness and spread peace to everyone. If you're having a bad day, don't let anybody else have a bad day. So like all these things that happened to me in the past that were bad and just absolute demons just 
hanging over my shoulders in my head during that day. I make sure that I'm not going to spread that bad vibe and energy to other people. I make sure that other people, you know, see me as the regular Vinny. You know, obviously I talk to people about the stuff that's like bothering me, but I live every day in the moment. I live in the moment. I live because I want to live. I don't want to live because I'm like, oh, here comes the dread of like things coming my way. I got to live in the moment. I got to live it like it's my last. And you know, you just got to appreciate the nice things in life. So hopefully that answers your question. Angry Malaysia could ask who or what inspired you to start streaming and making content. Angry Malaysia could ask who or what inspired you to start streaming and making content. Personally, I started streaming by my... For streaming, I actually was self-taught. I saw somebody that was on my following list that was streaming from mobile. And I started streaming off my phone, which then sparked into streaming off a laptop to my first PC, to my second PC, and to what I have now. So streaming, personally, the person who was streaming off their phone, if I didn't see that, I probably wouldn't be here today. Making content on YouTube, however, I was always inspired by Let's Play YouTubers like Markiplier. He was like the one I used to watch every time I get off school. I was like, oh, I'm going to watch some Markiplier. He was back in elementary and junior high, I was like, oh, I'm going to binge watch him. I don't do that anymore, but I think he was a key moment into like me wanting to edit and just like upload YouTube videos for that part. Q-Man asks, where do you see yourself in a year or even two or further? Doing Twitch still or YouTube more? Or what are your plans for the future? So for Twitch and YouTube, I really can't answer that question because one stream could absolutely change the course of like me streaming on Twitch and doing YouTube and all that stuff. I don't know. We'll see what happens, but I will still be doing it in the future. Yes. Personally, for the future of me, I see myself still working at my job. I kind of want to move out in like the next year and a half or two. Hopefully. I mean, I can do it now, but I would like to move out with like friends and like not just by myself. I feel like that'd be very weird. So I'm probably gonna get a new car this year only because, you know, I think it's, I think it's time for me to get one. I mean, my car is a junker, but like I said, whatever gets me to point A to point B, that's all that matters to me. I don't really care about the fancy stuff. So that's my future for me personally. Those one guy asked, how many pairs of shoes do you have? If we're counting like slippers and like dress shoes and slides and all that stuff, about 17 pairs. But if you take all those away, I have about 11 pairs of shoes. But to go into more detail, this is my favorite pair of shoe. It's a pair of Vans. Um, it has been worn before, so you could probably see like the marks here. Uh, I love this shoe. This can go with like anything that I wear with black pants and a black shirt. This looks absolute gorgeous. It's stunning. It's a good pair of shoe. Aloe asks, BB's favorite childhood memory. Now, this is a good story that I have to tell. So back in sixth grade, we had our graduation, you know, to move up to junior high. And what it was is we would all go in the auditorium, all the kids, all the teachers, and everyone's parents would be there. And there's two plaques they would give out to two sixth graders. I forgot what the one of the plaques said, but the other plaque was the Spirit of Giving Award. And what that plaque meant was you're outgoing, you're kind to everyone, you're just a good person all around, studious, you're never mean to anyone, and all this, all this stuff. And it was dedicated to our fourth grade teacher's son who passed away from a heart attack. So I'm sitting there, and all of a sudden I hear, Vincent, insert last name here, and then... Everyone's like clapping, like, whoa, like, yeah, like my parents were there. And I was like, I was like, what? And if you go to the elementary school, there is a plaque still on the wall. And I can't remember the year I graduated sixth grade, but it says the date and it says my name on it. And I got a blue teddy bear with it, but it's in my closet. I'm probably not going to grab it because I think it's like crammed somewhere up there. But that is my favorite childhood memory. I never thought I'd win an award just for being a, who I am. I mean, it's actually crazy. Barry the Bee asks, what is your favorite book? Any recommendations? Yes, I do have two recommendations. This might be biased, but my favorite book of all time is Anthony Kiedis' Scar Tissue. Basically, it talks about him, the band, and all the stuff he's went through with drug addiction, and then sobering up, and then losing band members, and losing friends, and stuff like that. And it's honestly just a great read all around. You you can see, like, his world just absolutely explode. But that is my favorite book of all time, but I do have a second option. This book I can't show the cover of because of a symbol on the screen, but I'll try and put a picture up here to give you a reference. It's called Mouse by Art Spiegelman. To give you the shorthand of it, because I can't really put it into words, it's a graphic novel by American cartoonist Art Spiegelman, and it basically depicts his father during the Polish Jew Holocaust era during that time, depicted with mice. And this book is absolutely crazy. It made me cry when I read it back in junior high, and I think you should read it. It's a really good read if you want to see, like, everything depicted, like, through mice. It's the craziest book I've ever read, and it's probably, like, top five books for me. No Vigilante 4 asks, What inspired the Burp Redemption button? All hail the Burp King! Funny enough, after August of 2021 when I put up the Q&A video, six days later I put up a video on how to burp on command with Vinny BB. 
Not only is that video the most viewed on my stream, but I still get people stopping by my stream to ask me to burp. It is still a channel point here on my channel. It is now 7,500 points. Burp anywhere on command within reason. The reason why I raised it from 5,000 to 7,500 is because I'm not going to lie. I almost threw up one time trying to do it because uh, I was burping way too much that day. I think I had too much Coca-Cola and I had to raise it a little bit. So it's still there. Katie asks, what keeps you constantly motivated to stream every day? And how's that motivation seeped into your everyday life? If it has. The simple answer for this is you guys, you guys keep me constantly motivated to stream. Like if it wasn't for you guys and supporting the TikToks and YouTube videos and the Twitch streams and subscribing and all that stuff, I probably wouldn't be here. The simple answer for this is you guys keep me going. You guys support the TikTok, support the YouTube, support the Twitch stream. You guys keep it moving. Like I know it's a slow climb for me as of lately, but I'm going to keep going and I'm going to keep myself motivated. And not only has that motivated me here, like when streaming, it motivates me in my everyday life. I get I get motivated at work. I do other stuff that I've never done before outside of streaming that I'm doing as like by myself. And I just feel more confident to talk in front of the camera. As for streaming for 840 plus days, I can just talk easily. If I go to like day one of me streaming, I'm probably like the most awkward, like the shy kid who walked into a new school. So you guys keep me motivated. You guys are all awesome. I hope you guys know that. You guys are there for me. The last question we have for the Q&A is from Max. What is your biggest flaw? Something you find always holding you back. It could be physically, mentally, whatever. Now, I'm going to answer this in the form of me personally, and you know, obviously me on Twitch and the YouTube side. In my personal life, the thing that's holding me back is overthinking the situations before they even happen. Because you could tell me something that's going to happen in the future, and I will overthink and overthink and overthink. I just got to live every day as much time as I can. Because if I overthink about something, I get stressed out, and then I become unproductive, and then I just don't want to do anything, and then I just like waste a whole day away. So that is the one thing that really gets me, especially with the weather, because right now it's overcast. It looks like it's about to snow, and I absolutely do not like that. I want to stay motivated, sunny out, you know, I want to keep grinding. But me thinking about like, oh, it's this is going to happen in the future, or that just happened. It's just like, it's like, oh God, what's going to happen next? What's going to happen next? That's what I don't like, and it sucks personally, but, you know, I just got to ignore it and just go with the flow and go throughout the day, if that makes any sense. The Twitch and YouTube side, what's holding me back is wanting to upload content that I'm scared to upload because right now I'm enjoying like playing like other games like Valorant CSGO. I'm, I like playing shooter games. I really want to upload stuff to YouTube that has to do with that because my YouTube right now is just let's play stuff, but I want to upload that stuff and I'm kind of scared too because the shift in like viewers is going to be like, it's going to be a downfall and the things I stream on Twitch, it's just like, are people going to like this? I'm kind of scared to stream things. I'm kind of scared to upload things and that's what's holding me back to like making anything like with TikToks and YouTube videos and all that stuff. It's just like, I'm scared to do it because I don't know what's going to happen. I just, I really want to say, screw it. Just put it up there. But that's the one thing that's really holding me back. I, I probably will break that wall anytime soon within the day or two. But that right now, it's that is the big thing holding me back. And just like me wanting to push and push and push. But, you know, it's slow. It's hard. That's what she said. But, you know, I just got to get through it. And I just got to, you know, do it. Do it my way or the highway. Get out of here. And there you have it. That is all the questions. So I do appreciate every single one of you watching. And thank you everyone who asked the questions. These were all good questions. And they actually made me think. I'll have to cut a lot of footage of me actually thinking. Because some were like, oh man, what is my favorite? So I appreciate every single one of you. Make sure you like, comment, subscribe. And we'll have to do this again next year. Until next time, boys and girls. Thank you all for being here. Peace.